How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. It has been, holy shit, it has been a bit of time since we last uploaded. Probably like two months or so. But honestly, that's just because it's been super crazy in my personal life. Uh, a lot of stuff happening with uh, different work, things like that. So, and you know, just working a lot. Haven't had a whole lot of time to go fishing, but... As you can see by the title and the thumbnail, I have been doing quite a bit of shopping for fishing lures. So, have a little bit of a haul video for you guys today. And if you can, I strongly recommend buying reusable bags to cut down your plastic bag consumption. I don't know about I don't know about other places in the world, but being from a Midwest family, we just had like one plastic grocery bag stuffed with a, a bunch of other plastic grocery bags and it was in like a closet. And uh, this, is, this is something that's more sustainable. And today we are powered by dirty bean juice. Oh, it's good. Anyway, so a lot of these lures have come from either um, primarily Walmart, and after that, Dick's Sporting Goods, and then uh, one special trip to Bass Pro Shop where I needed stuff that those other two places did not have. And a lot of this is stuff that I use quite a bit, but others is stuff I want to experiment with a little bit more. So I'm just going to go through all of it. So I went ahead and these are both from Walmart um, so this one is a Booyah spinnerbait this is, this is something you can get at Walmart um, chartreuse double willow leaf braid braid blades and those are you know the gold color um, I have thrown this quite a bit and honestly, like, spinnerbaits aren't something that I have a whole lot of confidence with just because I um, haven't really had any success with them. And I don't know why, because I've been throwing these in, like, the ideal situations. So, like, just, like, bringing it, like, above grass lines. Um, in a couple scenarios, there's, we're even, you know, bringing this above that grass line. There's, like, fry popping out of the water like because it's like you know this kind of looks like a predator coming at them and so i thought that would that's like the ideal scenario it's um you know food chain scenario where something bigger is going to come and smoke this um so i don't have too much confidence in spinnerbaits which is frustrating because i see a lot of people catching good fish with spinnerbaits so it's really frustrating for me um but I did hook into, there's this place where, um, there's this place where a lot of smaller bass school up. And so I was throwing this around there a lot and I hooked into two fish, but, um, I got them close to me and then they came off the hook. So doesn't quite count. Um, the next is we have, that's three eighths of an ounce, if that matters. I don't think it does a whole lot. So the next one we have is the Strike King KVD Spinnerbait. This is a really nice one. Um, it doesn't have like a place if you want to put a trailer. Does this one? Yeah, this one has like a little spot where you can like put a trailer right there where it'll hook on. Nothing fancy. Uh, this one does not. So, you know, if you prefer trailers or not on your spinnerbaits you know definitely a personal preference but this is kind of like a sexy shad color so it got the blue the yellow the white and then the double willow leaf blades um and that's another big preference is if a willow blade or colorado blades you know the bigger rounder ones um personally i've just been using these ones but this is a half ounce, haven't got a chance to throw this a bunch, 
Uh, a lot of stuff is, all, is like already kind of out of the package just because I was too excited to wait. Um, but we'll get into my next favorite one here. And that is frogs. So I bought two different kinds of frogs, uh, both for the same brand, and that is the Booyah Pad Crasher. And when you get when you get a uh, hollow body frogs, initially they come with a lot of s skirting on their legs, um, which that can lead to short strikes because the fish is just grabbing that skirting and not actually the body of the frog itself to compress that down get into those hooks um, so a lot of people what they like to do is trim these these legs and I do too one thing if you like walking the frog more you know walk that frog <laughs> um, you trim one leg shorter than the other and that helps with your walking motion more but and then some people like, this is a soft enough frog where I'm not too worried about it, but some people, they like to take their hooks and bend them up slightly, and they claim that gives you a better hookup ratio, but with these Booyah Pad Crashers, I feel like that hook placement is in a good enough spot to where I'm not worried about it, and it's a soft enough frog to where I'm not worried about it either. But these walk really well. I just need to trim the skirts on this. Um, and honestly, color is not a huge concern when it comes to frog fishing because all they're seeing is the bottom of that frog. So you're just seeing it's white and that's all the fish is seeing. And then this is what we see. Like the fish aren't really, they're not going to see the top of that frog. So honestly, your best bets are just going with white and black. Those are the only two colors you really need. And then I got a Booyah Poppin' Frog. Um, I already trimmed the legs up a little more and I did like an awful job at it because I just had my pocket knife and I wanted to use it right away. Um, but I've never used a popping frog before, but I really like this. Like this walks well and you can, you can kind of adjust how much that frog pops if you know what I mean. So you can do like light little, light little twitches. You just pop a little, pop a little water out, or you can like really get some good chugs in there where you're disturbing a lot of water. Um, but yeah, again, just like a like booyah, they have nice frogs, and for a good price, you can find these at you can find these both at Walmart. Um, that's probably like the best price here to get for them anywhere. Moving on to probably my favorite technique right after Texas rigs is probably throwing jigs. So I got a couple that I bought here. We'll go over my least favorite first. So this is the Booya Boo Jig. This is in half ounce and honestly, black and blue color. Honestly, these jigs are all right. Um, one thing about them that I'm not a big fan of is the rattles that they come with. I'm not crazy about them. I usually just end up taking them off. And the rattle place is kind of re weird on them anyway. It's like right there. And so I just end up taking those off. But honestly, it's like a decent jig for what it is, they're not super expensive. I think they're like maybe two or three dollars. Um, but not my favorite jig, but it works at a pinch, especially like if you're running low. Um, but overall, a decent jig, it'll get you the job done, it'll catch fish. Not my favorite though. Moving on to my favorite jig. I bought two of these, I believe these are these are three eighths of an ounce, or one's three eighths, one's half ounce, um, and that is the Terminator jigs. Um, these have VMC hooks on them, and one of the things that I really like about these jigs 
is that little hook keeper on the front there where it's actually like a hook for your trailer rather than just a like uh you know just what piece of the lead that's kind of like how it's how like the lead is poured and it comes up with the hook kind of like on the spinner bait here where you have that and it's just part of the lead head i like the hook a lot better i think it does a better job of securing your trailers and I just got this in black and blue as well, but this one has um, hints of purple in it, and I really like that. So, around where I am down south here, there's a lot of dirty water, so that's why I opted for the black and blue colors, because that works good for dirty water. And they have, these do come with a rattle that you can take off. But honestly, it's not as obnoxious as, like, the Booyah one. It's, it's a lot more subtle. So I'm gonna, I'll probably leave a rattle on one and take the rattle off the other. But, really like these jigs. I like the head design on them. They're very narrow to where they can come in and out of cover easy. Versus, like, these Booyah jigs where they're just, like, very big and just kind of clunky. These have a very nice head design and they're nice and smooth. They can come through color, a uh, little color, cover very easily. Words today. Uh, and then I got this jig that <clears throat> I wanted to check out and see what they're all about. And so far, so good. I've been um, fairly impressed with it, even though I haven't caught any fish on it. And that is the Guggen Squad Thick Jig. And also got this in black and blue. And like, I really like that they, like going over like what I like about this right away, really like the head design on this. Like it's sloped. And this is the Thick Jig. So this is the one for flipping and pitching. Um, got some very stout hook on it. Um, but has like a nice head design where it can come through cover pretty easy. And then one thing that this has over the other ones is that these skirts are hand tied instead of just having that band over, over the skirt material. So that's something that's really nice. Plus, just like the uh, VMC jigs, these ones have both that little lead one, but they also have the hook, I believe. Yeah, they have the hook on the front, um, and that just helps your plastic trailer stay on a lot better. And then I just have that paired up with um, a Bandito Bug trailer, because it's like, it's the Guggen Squad, why not? Haven't caught anything on this, but it's a really nice jig, and I hope I don't lose it, because this is the priciest of all of them. This is like mid-tier. I think these are like $5 and these are $4. And then, you know, the Booyah jigs are like $2. Um, and then one nice thing is that on the heads of the Guggen Squad jigs is they have the size written right on there. So right away, you can see what size it is for like, you know, if you want something a little heavier or something on the lighter side. So this is 3 8 of an ounce. That's what... I like throwing, so I have a lot of confidence in throwing. Um, and like the wire, the wire brush guard, it's really nice. It's like the same, pretty similar stiffness to, uh, you know, the VMC one. One thing that's different though, that I kind of like, is they have, uh, they have the brushes like, they have them nice and short, so you don't have to trim trim the brush guard at all. Uh, some jigs you have to do that. That's something you look into a little more. But, it's not super stiff, but it's stiff enough to, to where I'm not gonna worry about snagging it too much. But also, it's flat across instead of just having the circle of just like a bunch of them. Like, mainly like all the other jigs that I've seen. This has like a flat, flat um, brush guard. And honestly, I think that makes a big difference. Like, I might be getting more of these. Even though they're a little pricier, I 
been liking it a lot. Um, that is uh, Terminator ones. You can't go wrong with these. These are a really nice jig. So, let's move on a bit more. Um, the next thing that I got that I also don't have a lot of confidence in is chatterbaits. And it's really frustrating because everybody catches flipping fish on a chatterbait. And I can't seem to do it. It's really frustrating. All the scenarios that I throw at it, it's like, this is supposed to work. This is supposed to be the time to throw it. And it's not working. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe the fish around here see a ton of them. But, and it's like, this should be the right color as well. So I got a couple different colors. So I got this one. This is chartreuse and white in the 3 8 ounce size. So that's in that 3 8 of an ounce size. Um, which, I, which I like a lot. I think that works for a lot of different things. Um, and then I got just a plain white one. And their white has, um, on the skirting, has like silver flake in it too. And then that just has a paddle tail swim bait trailer on it. Which honestly, I've just been throwing the chatter bait just straight up. I haven't put a trailer on it. So maybe that's, maybe that's what I'm missing out on. Maybe I need to put a trailer on it and that's going to make all the difference. But it hasn't been working for me. It's really frustrating. Um, I actually bought the trailer as well. So I got these Strike King Rage Swimmers. And these are pretty nice. I see a lot of people using them. Um, see quite a few people using them. A lot of people pair these up with you know, they're chatter baits, but you can also put them on spinner baits as a trailer as well. Maybe that's what I'm missing out on. Maybe my chatter baits and spinner baits need a trailer. So we have some trailers for those. You know what? We're gonna do it. Let's throw one of these. Oh. One of the things that I do like about, you know, Striking's packaging is that they come in the clam pack. Um, so you can keep all of your stuff like like especially with paddle tails like sometimes when the tails get a little bit bent up they don't work quite as nicely so this is something nice and then like you know Google and squad they they do that as well with their baits which is nice so we have our paddle tail swim bait and these ones are pretty nice. They got a nice feel to them. Um, and then, unlike a lot of the other Rage products, these do not have the coffee scent. But this color is called Electric Shad. So it's really nice. It has like a lot of this, like, uh, has green, purple, and like silver flake through it. And then has this, like, um, nice, kind of looks like more of a gray. And then this almost iridescent purple going through it um and then just like a white a white belly oh honestly that looks so good i'm gonna throw this on here and one nice thing that they have is on the top and on the bottom here they have these nice hook slots um for rigging it up so we're gonna throw this oh this is such an appropriate pairing the strike king Spinner bait with the Strike King paddle tail swim bait. I feel like this is going to look good. That's all that matters. As long as, like, your baits just look good to you, nothing else matters. You know what? That's it. That's what it was missing. It needed that trailer. Now it's complete. Now I will catch a ton of fish. But anyway, wanted to get these. Uh, you can also throw these on like a jig head, anything like that, or a swim bait hook. You know, that's belly weighted. Kind of like these. So these are VMC. These are the drop dead um, swim bait hooks. These are belly weighted. Uh, the weight, on, the weight is one eighth of an ounce, and they're a four out hook. I wanted to get these to throw, not so much these swim baits, but another one that I got because I kind of want to. I want to start throwing uh, 
bigger kind of soft plastic swim baits just to experiment with that a bit. But I like VMC. I think they make a great product. They're owned by Rapala or part of that, you know, same same company or whatever. Um, they make really great products and plus these were cheaper than the owner beast hooks. So that played a big part of it too because like those were like like eight bucks and these were like four or six something like that and he got more out of these as well so that's why i got them they have like the little uh screw lock to where you can put those um on swim bait easily so it's a good segue into this next bait so picking up at dicks this these are the gambler big easies um so this is about like a five inch Soft plastic swim bait, and that color is called Tennessee Shad. So a, blue, a bit bigger of a swim bait, but honestly not big to what a lot of other people throw. Uh, I think it's gonna start me getting into throwing some swim baits around. Ooh, and these like, oh, yo, these smell like straight up like garlic bread. I kind of like it, but it also has that like you know the plasticky scent in it as well. Um, but they got a good feel. They got like, uh, some kind of hook channels in them. And honestly, I think this will be like a pretty decent bait to like start throwing like some swim baits around. I want to get a couple different other ones, but I think they'll start out. I've thrown it around a little bit. Um, I could bluegill thumped it, but honestly, um, I think these are good swim bait to start with. It comes in a pack of five and honestly I think this was like three or four dollars so I don't think you can go wrong if you want to like try out swim baits. I think this is the way to go because you're not invested too much in it. You know you're just getting the hooks as well and you can throw this around on like your standard casting gear. You don't have to like get a, a specialty swim bait rod anything like that because I'm just throwing it on my heavier gear. And moving on to this next part, I'll just show you this. So this is something I picked up as, at Walmart as well that I wanted to try out. This is Strike King's Tungsten, and this is the 3 8 ounce. Um, something a bit heavier for my Texas or Carolina rigs. Um, you know, this isn't something that you're gonna use for like flipping and pitching around heavy cover, like punching, you know, it's, or, well, flip in and pitch around lighter cover, but then, like, this isn't something you can try punch uh, with. This is, like, not heavy enough for that. But I want to try out their tungsten. I've tried out Titan tungsten, and that's great stuff. So I want to try out Strike King and see how it compares. Um, and if I like it, if I don't, I'll probably go back. Like, if I don't like it, I'll go back to Titan. If I do like it, I'll probably stick with this because... This, this was pretty affordable as far as tungsten goes. I like tungsten just because it, you get like more sensitivity when you're uh, throwing it around, but also it's a little more environmentally friendly. Like it sucks to lose because it's a little spendier, but it's also a little more eco-friendly because you're not throwing lead around and leaving lead in the waterways. All right, moving on into this next section. Um, I got these strike king and i got these at walmart this is like something cool is this little kit of strike king rage ned bugs and so you pop it open and it comes with five pieces with two ned rig heads so ned rig you know that's it that should be something i'm all about you know being from the midwest where this originated from but honestly it's not really my thing so it's something i've wanted to get into more and i got this in black blue swirl just because like i said there's a bit darker more stained water around here so that black and blue um is a good color for that but i also like june bug a lot that's a good color but like as you can see this just is like a like mini version 
of the Strike King Rage Bug, which is like down and more like a bite size, like a really small bite size form. And so you just pull the appendages off and it has, you know, they have like the, the little flange on the end of them. That's that patent, patented Strike King Rage technology. What do they call it? Rage Tail technology. So they actually have that, um, they have that patented, but the Guggen Squad, they were able to obtain that patent, and so a, that flange is on a lot of, you know, it's on their, like, Bandito Bugs, and then their, um, Craws that they have. They're, they're like Kraken Craws. But why I wanted this is these came with net heads, and so as you can see, these are just, pretty standard Ned rate heads. One thing I really like about them is they have that hook that I like. Uh, that little hook keeper for um, that holds your plastics in. I like that little wire like a heck of a lot better than just the piece of lead that they mold to hook up. Um, but I've thrown this around a little bit. I honestly like Net fishing is not my favorite way to fish just because it's super slow and you don't really do anything. So it's not something that I prefer, but I'm like, I think it's like four bucks and it comes with, you know, two net heads and um, five of those little rage, uh, rage net bugs. Honestly, I don't think you can beat that. And there's like, I'm my local Walmarts, they have like whole big boxes of them with, what do they got? Just different Rage, or not Rage, just different Ned stuff. So they got the, the Rage Ocho, they got the Rage Cutter Worm, they have, um, I think that's it, they have, and then they have the Rage Bug. So honestly, you can try like a, a bunch of different stuff for pretty cheap and just kind of be stocked up for, um, Ned fishing. Cause you got the heads and then you got the baits just right there in that little pack um and a huge wide variety of colors too if you want to you know more natural colors uh or you know colors for more stained water like this black and blue and keeping on with kind of the finesse category i got these um zoom finesse worms and there's 20 to a pack and honestly you can't go wrong with these because these are like three bucks as well i can get 20. And I got these in the watermelon red. And honestly, the reason why I got these um, is because these are so perfect for the um, rat wake baits that I make as tails. Um, the bigger ones are just a little bit too much. This is smaller, a little lighter. Uh, it just helps with the action more. These really go as tail. They have a lot of action on the back of that. Um, on the back of that wrap wake bait but also you can do a lot of stuff with these if you really want it you can like throw this it's like a wacky rig or a nico rig where you have that weight in the head right there and you're just bouncing it off the bottom um or also on like a shaky head that's something you get shaky heads um this is a good color for more uh clear water not so much you know Stained water is a more natural color with it being that watermelon red. Um, honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with Zoom products because they are affordable, but like honestly, like they work. Um, but I guess you could say that about any soft plastic really is that they, they work. Um, because somebody somewhere is catching something on them. Next, I got the Strike King Rage Craws, and these have the, these are also not coffee scented. These do come with that exclusive coffee scent. Um, so I got the Rage Craws, and honestly, these are good on the back of, you know, as if you want to use them as trailers for your jigs or just throwing them on a Texas rig. Um, and honestly, I don't throw craws a ton. I kind of like worms or, uh, creature baits, you know, like my favorite being the missile baits D 
D-bomb. But I really like the clam packaging that these come in. It's just to kind of help them keep their form a little bit. I'm just gonna grab one out here. So I haven't really got a whole lot of a chance to look at these. Oh, this one got kind of twisted. But anyway, let's take a look at these. So I just got this in black. This black and blue flake. And honestly, those look really good. I'm not getting so much of the coffee scent. They just smell like flipping plastic. But anyway, like these, these look good. And they got that flange on the on the claws to help them really kick. To help them really kick when they're going. Um, and they got this hook slot on the bottom, which is super cool. Um, you know, help you if you're Texas rigging it or whatever. But honestly, these look really good. I'm excited to throw these around. Um, or, you know, have them here. Let's, uh, let's take one of these VMCs and we're just going to sacrifice. See, I only. I only really use, like, I only will really put this on as a trailer once it's chewed up a little bit, like if I throw it as a Texas rig and if, you know, the top gets all, like, beat up, then I will, like, have it graduate or, like, get demoted to, like, being on a jig trailer, um, just because it's a little bit extra ways you can get a little more out of your soft plastics. And please don't just like throw your soft plastics like in the water once they're done or just like throw them on the dock, on the bank, like pick them up, like I put them in my pocket, um, save them up because like, I don't know, maybe you can find somebody in your area that like will like make soft plastics and you can like remelt your broken up plastics and make something else. Or you could do it yourself. Um, I know the all you need is a Pyrex cup and a mold and a microwave. Um, and you start making your own soft plastics, recycle your own whatever. And you can get more out of your plastics and a little bit more sustainable than, you know, throwing plastics just in the waterway. Um, and I do that too. Like if I see other people's soft plastics, like if they're not like too gross, I'll like pick them up and I just kind of throw them in the uh, trunk of my car. Or I'll use them myself if they're not too beat up or dirty um, or throw them away. Like I seen like a big fat Senko that was like in the water for a while and they get like all big and puffed out and you know threw it away. It's, you know it's the least you can do. Like it doesn't take much effort. Most, most places, most like, like lakes or whatever you go to have like a garbage can right there that gets taken out fairly consistently. But anyway, that was my haul. That was a lot of fun. Um, honestly, I filmed this video a couple of times just because I, you know, some distractions here and there. My battery died one time on the camera. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's great to get back sitting in front of you guys again. And we'll probably do some fishing at some point in time. So, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, tell me what you guys wanna see, cause honestly, I'm here for that. And be sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't. If you're seeing me for the first time and you stuck around this long, why not subscribe, honestly. Um, like the video, share with a friend, share with two friends. And I will see you guys for the next video.